All right, so the Neptune 4 Pro here looks pretty good on the table. Quite familiar from the last models, except with some pretty major upgrades. So let's start up here on the top. We got the spool holder and mounts right here to the channel. We got a filament detector that swivels around. Everything's metal here, including these brackets. We can see our pretty unique channels that says create the future on them on both sides. Flipping around to the back, we can see we have a tethered belt between the two dual lead screws, which I really like this because everything is synchronized together. We can see the filament wire travel through the channel, down and out. We got metal for the ends on both sides. This is the x-axis motor and where it plugs and also the end stop switch. We got this pretty cool parts cooling fan, which is external. It's got an on and off switch here and then the power cable. And it is quite smart as it is regulated by the main board. And it does blow right underneath the nozzle. Here we can kind of see the back of the hot end and the metal rollers with the metal strain relief bracket that holds this cable here. And I kind of installed this going here because I didn't want it to be too close to the lead square as it was touching it on these holes, so yeah. So going down, we have the dual motors here on both sides, our Y-axis motor, and then the in-stop switch here. The wire coming from the bed, which is strained relief very nicely and goes into the back here. Pretty large squishy feet on four corners. We do have the power supply back here, which we can see that we can switch between 230 and 115, and looks like it is factory switch to 230. So if you live somewhere where it's 115, you will need to switch that. And we can do that with the provided flat screwdriver that was included. And yeah, just make sure you're at the correct voltage before you power it on. So moving this way, you can see we got our power input port. It is fused with an on and off switch. Our cable management's very nice for this main cable going up. So going back to the front, here right on the top we can see the relief bracket. Then here we have the input for the filament. And this is the extruder arm to release it. We've got a little gear here that we can see when the filament's flowing. Very nice. And going down here we can see blower fan for the parts cooling on both sides. And behind here we can kind of see the induction sensor. And underneath we got the heat block which is silicone socked with the nozzle. And also we got a little light here. And you guys can see where the fan blows out here on both sides. Also this little hole here is where you can adjust the tension on the extruder. So going this way we have the x-axis and stop switch. Metal rolled rails. Adjustment for the belt here. Going down to the bed. We do have a 225 by 225 by 265 build volume. And the build plate itself is is a textured PEI sheet which does pop off. It is magnetic and it's flexible and it's just a chrome finish on the other side. But yeah, I love these beds. They work great. Underneath that we got the magnetic mat and then our heated aluminum bed which is not insulated and for this size it's not a big deal. The frame seems to be pretty thick and straight. And then we got quality springs with adjuster knobs that are good size. And here in the very front, we got our adjustment for the belt on the Y axis. Over here, we have the manufacturing label. Pretty clean going here. Unfortunately, no storage anywhere. But right under here, you guys can see we got our micro SD port. And it is kind of hard to get to, sort of, because it's right underneath this. But you're probably going to mostly use the USB drive anyway. And we also have a USB type C connection here. And at the very end, we got our port for the screen, which I really like about Elegoo as they have these removable screens. They're still a little large and the bezels are a little big. I wish they'd make them a little smaller and nicer looking, but still for what you get, this is awesome. And they just magnetize to the cradle here and you can pick it up, look at it and then put it down. And there is a sticker here that reminds us to check our voltage, which we did already. So let's go ahead and peel the screen protector off. So going from the screen this way, you can see we have an ethernet port and that's going to be if you want to connect your printer to your router and have access through it through a web portal, which there is quite a few features, especially this being a clipper printer. So yeah, overall a pretty feature packed printer. Put this bed back on. I wish there was something to butt against as it's kind of hard to line it up perfectly every time. But yeah, I mean, the Pro here definitely brings some really cool things like these metal rails with metal rollers on the X and why which would really give us more precision and longer life overall so for the next part i'm going to plug it in we'll power it on preheat it check make sure everything works and level the bed all right so i got the printer plugged in let's go ahead and power it on i can hear the fans we got the logo here on the display and there we go. So it took about 30 seconds or so to start up. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to settings and turn down the brightness under advanced settings here so I can film the screen a little better. And you guys can see here, we could also turn on and off the key sounds. So what's great about Elegoo is that they're able to integrate the Clipper software seamlessly into their design. If you use the Elegoo printer before, this is very intuitive and easy to understand. So here on the main menu, we can see we got print, prepare settings, level, and 
our temperature and location parameters there. So let's go ahead and click on prepare and we'll click home all in the middle. And we'll see, make sure everything works. So Z went up, X, Y, and now coming down, and it looks like that's working also. Down here we can see it says temp. I'm gonna click on that and now we're going to preheat everything. And I'm just gonna click on ABS here and it's gonna start preheating 240 on the nozzle and 80 on the bed. And if we go back to the main menu, we can see here that our nozzle and bed are rising in temperature. So yeah, looks like everything is working, which is perfect. So for the next part, let's go ahead and do the bed leveling. And we're gonna click on the level here. So it's asking us to confirm. It's gonna move into position. And here we get a new menu that shows us the offset. And then we got a couple of choices of auxiliary and automatic. So the first thing we wanna do is do the auxiliary leveling, which is going to be the manual one with these knobs. And then we'll click on automatic and finish that. So let's click on auxiliary. This kind of explains to you how to do it. We're gonna click confirm. And you guys can see we got one, two, three, four, five points we can click on on the bed to get the nozzle to go there. So you're gonna need some kind of piece of paper. I'm just using this little posty note. And so what we're gonna do is click on one and then two, three, four, and just keep going around until it's pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna click on one. So we're gonna stick our little paper between the nozzle and the bed. And I can see already that it's too tight. So yeah, essentially what we're doing here is doing manual bed leveling. And what we're trying to do is get some friction in the paper between the nozzle and the bed. So we go to two. Again, it's too close. And this one's actually completely loose in the back. So yeah, this is why it's quite important to go ahead and do the step and not just start printing. All right, that feels pretty good. We'll go to three. This one's too loose. There we go. Now we'll go to four. And this one's too tight. So yeah, they're all gonna be a little different. So since we had to adjust them kind of a lot, we definitely need to go around again. So I'd recommend at least three times. So let's go ahead and keep clicking all around. So we're back to one now. The reason this is kind of important is the closer you get it, the less compensation the automatic bed leveling has to do and the better first layer you're gonna have. So, so yeah, since we started adjusting, the bed kind of moved around and so now everything needs to be adjusted again. This is again why it's important to keep adjusting it a few times around. All right, so we're starting to get really close as everything feels pretty good. It just needs to be slightly, slightly tuned. So that means we're ultra close. And you know, if you go at least three times, it should get you there. But I just keep going around until everything feels the same. And it's such a tiny, slight adjustment at this point. So yeah, we're pretty much there. And we can go ahead and hit the home button in the middle and see what our home feels like. So mine is just a little bit loose which is okay because the outer bed leveling will compensate for any kind of dips or heights in the build plate all right so now we're going to go back and it's actually going to prompt us to do out of bed leveling which is pretty cool so we're going to confirm if you don't get this prompt just go back and click on auto leveling so yeah we're going to confirm to do out of bed leveling so this is going to take a little while as there's a few points to go through but yeah it's just going to go around the build plate and probe it and take measurements and then when it's printing it's going to offset that as it's putting the first layer down and I don't know if you guys can see but there's a total of 36 points that it's gonna take so all right and that's all 36 points so now it's gonna set up so we can do our offset and also down here you guys can see what our variations are between the different points of the bed and everything is looking really good nothing is more than 0.14 looks like and 0.16 and that corner is a little bit low but that's okay it's still very close tolerance so we're gonna grab our little posty note now and go underneath the nozzle and we're gonna check and see if we need to set the offset any and it looks like we do and we need to go down a little bit so we're gonna choose the increments that we want to go down so I'm just gonna go very slowly at 0 0.01 if you're much higher up you might want to go 0 0.1 millimeters so let's go ahead and go down slowly and actually I think I'm a little higher so I'm gonna go 0 0.1 millimeters at a time there we go it's grabbed it back to 0 0.01 now I'm gonna go up because now it's a little too tight and we're starting to be pretty much perfect I think Yep, that does feel really good. So you want the same drag that you kind of did all around. So just the papers with some slight drag. So our offset ended up being minus 1.750. So yours is gonna be different, every printer is different. And this is why you calibrate it to each one. So once you do all this, you're pretty much done. And all you gotta do is click the back button and it's gonna save everything. 
So we're gonna confirm the save. And we go back to the main menu. 